Hey folks, me again. Yeah! Welcome to another fantastic adventure with the International Big Shot. Here on this uh, cold and rainy April morning in northeastern Pennsylvania. It's not really that cold, it's like four or five degrees, but my phone is warning me that I should expect sleet within the next hour. Yeah, sleet. Anyway, I'm ready for it. I d ditched my two layers of outdoor dressing and I'm now back to my usual four layers. So I should be okay. Today I'm going to be talking about email. This is in the category of things I don't like, but I want to assure everybody that I do like email. But there are certain parts about it, and certain ways people use it, that I don't like. When I first moved over to Malaysia, I was working with a guy that was starting a new company. And as part of the IT setup, he thought we needed our own uh, company email server. When I heard that, I nearly had a stroke. Because if you want, if you're a small company and you want to have your own email server, please sit down, rethink it, and decide that you don't want your own email server. Nobody knows how to run an email server. You really don't need an email server in the same way that if you build a house, you don't need to build a power plant out back just to keep the lights on. Normally, you would connect yourself to the mains and buy power from the power company. Same thing happens with email. If you're starting a small business and you need email, and you do need email, the best way to do is go through an email provider like uh, Google or Yahoo or something like that. Don't use your own email server. You'll thank me later. Just don't do it. The real thing I wanted to talk about with email though is not really how it works. Most people really don't have to worry too much about that because their emails just work. <clears throat> and you don't have to know how or why it works. The thing I wanted to talk about is the way people don't maintain good email hygiene. I mean, be, while you're watching this video, try to remember all the email addresses that you have or have had so far in your life. How many email addresses you still have access to and how many different email addresses you give out to your friends. If you come up with more than three or four, you should have a really good reason for having those addresses. For example, I think a best practice is to have one email address that is your address. Not your company, not your school, nothing. It's your address. So when you deal with banks, airlines, online shopping, things like that, that's the email address you're, you're using. Now naturally you're going to have a work address, but if you use that as your only address, then ask yourself what happens when you change jobs, uh, retire, that email address disappears and all of a sudden the people that were contacting you with that email address are now sending you emails that you have no access to anymore. So your work email should be used only for work email. A third email might be one that you use for spam. Like if you want to go to some online site and download a white paper or something like that, you might use your sort of spam email in order to put that in the little email slot and get the white paper. Morning. Because if you, any place that asks for an email like that, 
you know you're going to get bombarded with uh, emails trying to sell you an online course or something. They're going to sell you something. You're going to get email after email from them to get their white paper or whatever it is they're offering for free. So that's what a spam email would be for. You'd check it now and then, maybe, but you wouldn't give it out except for things like that. So you, you really wouldn't care if you got email at it and didn't know. But your personal email address is the most important. Okay, so you're down to three emails. One personal, one work, and one spam. And if you're a student or you're going to school and they have their own email emailing system, you know, you might be stuck with a fourth email like that, but if possible, I would use my personal email address for anything like a school or something, something like that. The next step in email hygiene is to check your email. I don't know how many times I've sent email to some of my friends and then I have to text them a few days later and say, hey, did you get my email? They just don't bother. A lot of people that I work with in Asia, and this is showing up in the United States now too, they communicate with everybody by text message or WhatsApp or WeChat. There's a lot of different uh, online apps that you can use to send short messages. But anyway, if you have a personal email address, you should check it every day. You don't have to spend all day writing emails and answering emails, but at least check it every day so that you know who's trying to con contact you, what they want, and what you have to do. Sometimes you don't have to do anything with an email. It's just information. But at least check it. Okay, final tip. This is for your personal email address. You won't have any control over what your work email address is, but your personal one should be one that you're not going to be embarrassed to put on a resume or to send out to people that you don't know and things like that. So when you come up with a permanent personal email address, you've got to avoid things like gorilla butt at gmail or Italian stallion at yahoo.com and stuff like that. Get something that has something to do with your name that when people see the email address, they know who it's from. It may not actually be your name because if you type in your name for your Gmail address, for example, you might find out that your name is already taken by somebody else who might have the same name. So some variation of that might be necessary. But avoid stupid email names because they're only going to embarrass you at the time that you least want it to happen. It might be funny for your friends, but it's going to be embarrassing to you later on. So when you pick a permanent, personal email address, make sure it's not something you're going to be embarrassed to send around to people that you don't know. Okay, one more thing. Some of you have probably already noticed that I have an email address in the notes for this video. In fact, for all my videos. And if you want to contact me, you can contact me at that email address, internationalbigshot at gmail.com. And you're thinking, what, well, Bill, is that your third email address? No, no, it's my fourth one. When I mentioned work email addresses before, you may have more than one job. So if you have two works or two jobs, then you might have two email addresses, one for each place that you work. In fact, you may have more than that. But the point is, the point is there are work email addresses. You have work email addresses, personal email addresses, and then one you really don't care about. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.